Hey traders from around the world, it's your boy Jeremy Alexander Newsom with Quadruple Witching Day in the house. It's Friday, the 18th of March. Hopefully you had a great, successful, happy, kind, and fun-filled St. Patrick's Day. Um, got myself an event tonight going on at the Cookery in Nashville, Tennessee. It's a really, really great place if you guys ever get a chance to come and go. It is a, uh, a place that helps homeless men and women find jobs. Uh, in the restaurant industry. So it teaches uh, very important skills about uh, cooking and restaurant business and management and food selection and menu selection and creation. And uh, it houses men and women and just teaches them the necessary skills, like really, really good skills uh, of the kitchen. And then, you know, gives them into the workforce. So it's a great place. So anyway, usually what happens is one of the members makes a meal and then there's a movie uh, to go along with it. And that's tonight that we're watching Pan, and, which I actually haven't seen before, and we're eating uh, like a low country bowl, so should be a good night. Anyway, let's talk markets really quick. Uh, the SPY is uh, right at 204.50, and uh, you guys have been seeing this for a while. I've been looking at it kind of often. Here's the weekly chart on the SPY, and the weekly uh, really has, and so far right now, with 14 minutes left to go in the market, uh, very, very similar properties to last week. So we're ending with six white counts in a row as predicted. So if this is gonna follow suit, one of two things will happen. We talked a little bit about this last time. The last time we bounced off of 187.40, which again, not a big shocker, um, before August, we had seven white candles in a row and then we dipped. So we're either gonna go a little bit higher next week or we're gonna pull back. That's just my take. I don't think the pullback will be massively sharp. I really like the way my good buddy Adam wrote it in a text message. Uh, give me six seconds to find that text really quick. Uh, boom, 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 boom. He says, are we in another don't fight the Fed move upwards? Question mark. It appears so. A little rest, small rollover maybe, and then all time highs? Question mark. Makes a lot of sense to me. So uh, will that exactly happen? I'm not entirely sure, but I would say this and this makes a lot of sense. Uh, Trading back up to the high. Um, this and this makes a lot of sense. And again, question, do we bounce from there? That makes tons of sense. Um, and then obviously, you know, third option, do we just roll right back over? I don't think we just roll over cleanly. I think that we definitely will have a chop fest, something like, something like that or something like that up in this area. Um, you know, if we do pull back and we do bounce and we do make it back to the all-time highs, sweet. You know, we'll see. Uh, if we make it back to 182, guess who's buying again? Uh, just throwing that out there, letting you guys know. Brian Shepard, Rick King, both of those had profitable bull put spreads expiring in the next uh, 12 minutes. So congrats, gentlemen. So here's the support. If we make it back down to that area, uh, we'll be buying again on the SPY. Today, this uh, the mor this morning, this was my note. Uh, I think we gapped down, which we did, uh, but I knew that. I knew pre-market that was going to happen. Gap down, trade bullish, which we did, then roll over a bit and go wild the last hour of the day. That was really kind of my analysis early this morning. Here's the last, uh, here's the five minute chart. And that's exactly what happened. We gapped down, we traded bullish, we rolled over and then we went wild uh, the last hour of the day. <laughs> so these are some pretty big, you know, it's a 60, 70 point swing right there in just a few minutes on the SPY. So cool to see what that one ends up doing overall, but uh, likely we'll close bullish uh, and close with an inside day candle this week. Let's hop over here to the IWM. Phil was looking at the IWM. He's like, what's next, man? Well, here's my thought on the IWM. I think we go higher. And we are at the 100 simple moving average. Um, today we closed above it, or appears we're gonna be closing above it. Since we closed above recently on our last interaction, uh, and then ended up going a tad higher, I think that happens again. So this appears to be a flag pattern to me on the IWM. You had a really good kind of a V bottom bounce out of here, flag pattern, and say we're closing above the 100 something moving average. If I had to guess, we uh, probably do retest, like I mentioned a little bit, and then potentially we could bounce. Very good chance it looks almost identical to this. Again, that's the last bounce I've been referring to. Um, and you know that, that could happen, right? We barely break above the 100, everyone hops on bullish. Right, everyone gets in bullish now, and then we pull back just enough to trap some people, and then we bounce and we roll over again, just like back here. That's definitely a possibility. Um, I'm being really cautious on any bearish trades I take because they're not setting up very cleanly. If you're looking to take a bearish trade, it might be best with an option saying like, okay, I don't think we go here, 
for example, you know, do a, a bear call spread up in this area, 114, 115, 115, 116, something like that for April. Uh, but I don't think there's tons of premium in there. But either way, on the IWM, hopping over here to a weekly chart. Uh, this one, strong candles coming in. You have five white candles in a row in a weekly. And really, um, I think it makes a lot of sense, or kind of makes a lot of sense, if we do retrace all the way back up to this area before we do anything sp spectacularly bearish. But again, if we do roll over, I think 104 would be kind of the line in the sand where I think we bounce again on the IWM. So just be cautious if you're trading anything bearish because as much as we want the market to roll over potentially because people like trading bearish markets, it doesn't have to happen. So just kind of keep that in mind. The dollar index, ladies and gentlemen, ticker symbol DXY um, is beautiful at this point. It really is working out very, very well. Uh, I'll open up our last time that we drew the dollar index to kind of give you guys my idea from a while ago. Form this little double top type of pattern, close of the neckline, kind of retest it a little bit, and it still looks like we're gonna be trading down to the 93 level. So the 93 level, if we get down to that support, that could coincide with the SPY or the general markets creating another high or creating a similar resistance, uh, kind of a big channel. And then from there, uh, I do anticipate the dollar bouncing, especially off the 100 simple moving average. So if the dollar bounces from there, equities, gold and silver, energies, they could all roll over at that point. It, they really will be tied to the dollar. I just don't know exactly if that's gonna happen, but I will be watching it very, very closely. So here's the last time, long time ago, um, when I looked at the dollar and kind of gave my overall viewpoint of what could happen three months ago, that's what kind of what I drew. So this was a daily chart on the dollar index and uh, I wanted it to dip, retest, and then kind of roll over. So again, notice that's exactly right about there when we drew that little rotation down, we did rotate down. We just haven't quite made it to that support yet. But per my drawing, if the fib, if the timing is right, we have about another week, week and a half, uh, maybe a month before the dollar trades down to a support and potentially bounces. So we'll see. That would be definitely interesting. Um, other swing trade setups. Uh, here's silver. Silver um, it got a few points to go. A few people got a covered call expiring at 15. Albert uh, got eight more minutes for that covered call to expire. You can always buy it back though. You know, right at the end of the day. Um, nice little potential flag, new black crow type of thing on silver. Nothing special overall, but uh, it does appear on a weekly chart to kind of be breaking out. Let's go look at gold, GL GLD. Roy's got himself a 122 covered call. Uh, gold still building a nice little continuation pattern, a little bit bigger of a triangle this time. Recently it had a small triangle like that, which it broke out of and retested, and that just really created a bigger um triangle pennant pattern looking thing. So gold still kind of trading sideways a little bit. Apple, ladies and gentlemen, trade to our target. Hooray! Hit the 100 simple moving average very nicely, very cleanly, and we did start getting a little bit of a selling candle today. Not massively shocking at all. So from here, what to do on Apple? Well, I think Apple could pull back a little bit into this retest gap. It is a Retest gap after all, so retesting does make sense. It's a little bit of a pullback into there and a potential bounce, or if it breaks above the 100 simple moving average with a gap or a strong candle that I would look for a retest off the 100 and a continuation a little bit higher. 110 uh, is my next target uh, before earnings. There is an Apple event, I believe, next week, and this has been just a very, very easy um, buy the rumor, sell the news type of trade. I don't know if the news will sell, cause Apple to sell off a lot, but uh, definitely has been a very, very profitable trade on Apple for the last few days. Uh, Caterpillar had a bearish trade on Caterpillar, did get stopped out, went bearish here, had a stop here, it got stopped out yesterday for 0.7 loss, 0.7 R. So got stopped out on Apple, if, uh, I'm sorry, Caterpillar. If you're looking to trade Caterpillar bullish, uh, this is a strong resistance. Here's a strong resistance. We're kind of breaking out of that with some volume. So look for a little bit of a bounce. And uh, if I got stopped out and trapped on a bearish trade, that means that a few other traders might have as well. That means some people could be trapped. So as my analysis was yesterday, uh, let's allow for a bounce and kind of go from there. Trigger symbol TCK is the most recent uh, swing trade getting triggered into. The TCK had a limit buy of 845 with a stop at 677. So look at these volume profiles, getting some good volume. Stock is making higher highs and higher lows. We had a retest gap action yesterday. We closed above all recent support uh, resistances. So if we're pulling back, we are doing that. TCK looks good. Uh, Shopify, took a symbol SHOP, keeping an eye on Shopify. We trade right to the 200 simple moving average today. We closed above the trigger yesterday, so this will be a limit buy at 2712. 
for anyone considering potentially to take Shopify. Maybe something like that happens and a little bit of a bounce comes out of there. Um, ticker symbol PYPL, PayPal, uh, battling that really good resistance at 40. So nice small internal resistance right there and right there, which has been kind of battling recent days. That's what we got on PayPal holdings. Um, as far as some day trades go, I got to give a few shout outs, ladies and gentlemen. Today was Friday. Um, I traded one trade pretty much break even. Uh, it was a one penny loss, so I can live with that uh, right at break even. Um, <laughs> Maria. Maria, my trader from Toronto, fade queen, uh, just absolutely went dirty on Adobe. This was a fade, pure intuitional trade uh, on on Adobe. She made 5.5 R's on this in, th in 30 minutes. The ladies went wild today. Uh, they, they put the men in the dust. So uh, Adobe, I was just a few pennies away. Uh, I was very, very close from shorting at the open. And uh, I'm more or less just talking myself out of it because I'm a big, I'm a big dumb dumb. Um, but anyway, Maria did it like a champ. Really shorted right at the open because you had a lot of white candles coming into here. Uh, Steven Steckler also shouts to him. He wanted to short Adobe at the open. I don't know if he did or not. But just a great intuitional fade. A fade is when you trade the stock in the opposite direction of the gap. And the reason we thought that because uh, again you have a lot of bullish candles before the gap, and you're gapping to a resistance and above an all-time high. So anyone who had ever bought Adobe ever before was profitable, not to mention the last five candles in a row were really strong bullish candles with good volume. So anyone who bought in the last five candles got a really good profit this morning. So it was a fade, and Maria just went bananas. Uh, so great job, Maria. Another shout out, uh, JP Morgan. JP Morgan had a really good bullish gap this morning. Uh, so today is Finance Friday, which will be about one hour and three minutes. I'll be pulling up the afternoon trading floor and trading with some other traders and setting up some other trades. JP Morgan is decently bullish at this point. Uh, if it closes above 59.75, which it will today, I'll be decently bullish. I want an end of day trigger, a close above 60.64, which I don't think happens yet. Uh, we only got three minutes left. If it closes above there, I'll be bullish. But today's gap was a really, really nice gap because you had a lot of bearish candles in here and I had a trigger at 59.75 to be bullish because that's the pivot. Clear that pivot, Solange made over 4R on a really solid day trade. Uh, here's the five minute chart. In the five minute charts, you had a nice little black candle to start the morning. One entry like that, one stop like that was a really good setup. Uh, brand new real life trader, Aaron, <laughs> just almost picked the top. He exited at 60.90 with some weekly call options. So he did really good. So Aaron, great job. Uh, so JP Morgan, really nice little gap. Good afternoon bounce. Uh, trade up a little bit higher on JP Morgan. So anyway, that's kind of my analysis on that one. Ended up losing on a credit spread on JP Morgan not too long ago. Uh, but really, honestly, as of since today is expiration Friday, I'm very, very thankful that I did, in fact, uh, get stopped out of that um, spread for a, the loss that I did lose. It was a small loss, very manageable today. Had I still been in that spread, it would have been, uh, been much, much worse. So yeah, JP Morgan. Last but not least, uh, here is Amazon. Amazon possible double top forming, which is really interesting. Uh, this is a diverging. There's not a lot of tech stocks that look like this, which is why I like it. Had a bullish trade not too long ago, which I lost uh, an R on that one pretty much immediately. So I'm looking to get that back. <laughs> um, at really good day trading opportunities the last two or three days on Amazon. A few, few traders got a chance to make an R or two on that one. But if it closes below 546.11, how about this? I'll, I'll throw it this way. I'm not buying call options. <laughs> if it closes below 546.11, I'm not going to be buying the stock. How about that? Ladies and gentlemen, thanks so much for watching this Real Life Stock Review. I appreciate it. I hope you have a most majestic weekend. Weather here looks beautiful in Nashville, and I will be seeing you next week. And until then, remember, love life, live life, and trade. See you.